In case you missed it, a lime green sky seen in the Sioux Falls, South Dakota area on Tuesday as a line of severe thunderstorms raced through this part of the state and raced through many states. What a sight that was and a long duration of really strong winds. Here to talk about it, warning coordination meteorologist Peter Rogers from the National Weather Service office in Sioux Falls. So let's begin with what we saw on Tuesday and what were some big takeaways from the weather perspective of the weather that we saw roll through? Yeah, so as that line of thunderstorms moved through much of South Dakota, it was classified as a derecho, which is a long, intense windstorm with winds in excess of 58 miles per hour, which is our threshold for severe thunderstorm warnings. But we did have several areas that were much higher than that in terms of overall wind speed. So what were some of those big takeaways in terms of the amount of wind speeds or the magnitude of the wind speeds that you saw? Right, so we did have a derecho come through South Dakota with this line of severe thunderstorms. And along that entire line, we had multiple reports of 58 mile per hour gusts or greater, which is the threshold for a severe thunderstorm warning. But we did have two locations that had gusts in excess of 90 miles per hour, one in Huron and one near Howard, South Dakota, which was in that 95 to even close to 100 mile per hour range. That's incredibly strong wind in that 90 to 100 mile an hour range. Did you have many reports of wind damage across your area? So far, most of the damage that has been reported to our office has been in the vein of a lot of tree damage across the area, uh, power lines down, power outages across many cities. We have had some isolated structural damage as well in different towns, but the vast majority of the damage that we're aware of at this time has been to trees. And let's talk about some of the sky color, that really unique shade. I don't see it that often at all, that lime green color. From what we know that may have attributed and contributed to that, what, what could be some of those factors? Yeah, it certainly grabbed a lot of people's attention because it was quite striking. Uh, I'm not an expert in atmospheric optics, but oftentimes when you see different colors in the atmosphere, it has to do with how the sunlight is scattering amongst the different particles that are in the air or the different uh, raindrops or hailstones. And so I think because of the unique color in this particular instance, it may be a matter of debate for quite a while, but those are some things that we've looked at in the past. And if you can kind of give us a setup on Tuesday, was it very hot? Was it very humid? Yes, we have had some very warm and humid conditions uh, for the past month or so. And in particular, leading into this event, we had dew points that were well into the 70s across most of the area, providing a lot of moisture and a lot of instability to feed off of for these storms to work with as they move through the state. And your area has been very windy. In fact, multiple derechos now. Can you kind of talk about that? Yeah, so we did have another very impactful derecho back in the middle part of May that also went across portions of South Dakota, as well as the one from yesterday. And so it has been very windy, not only from a convective standpoint with thunderstorms here in the spring and early summer, but also back in the late springtime, we had a lot of large scale synoptically driven wind as well. And so it has been a quite windy period here across South Dakota. Then my final question is looking back at the most recent severe weather event, how can we use that as an example of how to stay weather ready for the rest of the summer? These derechos provide a really unique opportunity because we have wind speeds that are often close to what we would consider a low end tornado wind speed. And so oftentimes what we're saying to folks is that if you receive a severe thunderstorm warning with 80 plus mile per hour winds within that warning, we want you to take the same action that you would as if there was actual tornado warning. So that means to get in your basement, the lowest level of your home, interior space. And so with these wind events, we want to make sure that people are just as ready and prepared as they would be for a tornado. And Peter, is there anything else that you wanted to add looking back at the most recent severe weather event? We really appreciate all the folks that we've been able to work with leading into and during the event to provide reports and to make sure that people and the public that we are serving are safe and prepared for the severe weather. And of course, thanks for all your work too. It never closes 24-7, 365. So thank you, Peter.